Let's check out where the markets are at right now. Indices are getting pounded a bit. We got the S&P is down eight points. Russell is down seven and a half, and the Nasdaq is down seventeen and a half. The Dow is currently down a hundred and ten points, breaking the triple digits. We'll get on over at our metals. We got copper right now. Copper down 0.73, almost one percent there. We got gold going in the other direction, up uh, what ten bucks right now, so almost one percent along with silver, a, what a one percent move as well. Natural gas getting slammed down two percent on the day. Gotta love natural gas, a very volatile instrument. Hopping on over to oil. Oil is now down only thirty cents. So we uh, we got a great trade earlier today. We'll go over that. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about some magnet pricing, and uh, we'll talk about stops a little bit. Go at you know sort of. We talked about that last Friday, and uh, we'll just build on that again today. Um, hopping on over, looking at the ags. We got the ags right now. Uh, corn is now flat on the day. Soybeans down five points. We got pound dollar. Pound dollar is currently down 19. Pips have got the euro dollar down 34. The euro pound is down 11. Dollar cat is currently up 70 pips. Dollar franc is up 24. Dollar yen is up 3 with the pound yen down 19. The euro yen down 30. And the Aussie yen down 21 pips on the day. All right, well, that uh, gets you caught up on your lunchtime market wrap on where everything is sitting at. Uh, before we hop into some of the other fun stuff real quick, I just want to make sure, what do we got on the docket uh, for next week? Let's take a sneak peek at the news that's coming up. Okay, so i uh, just going to pull up a basic four factory calendar. There's a whole bunch of them out there. It's a pretty easy one. Um, to read and uh, scroll through. So nothing Saturday, nothing Sunday. Across the planet, nothing's going on. Walking on into Monday. Monday, we're going to have pending home sales. So we need to go over that one. Um, and retail sales. Let me see. Go ahead and pull up my stats on all these fun trades. Get them together. Um, okay, so that lets us know about Monday. We'll come back to Monday here in a second. Uh, looking on over at Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, net lending, not a big deal. And eh, S&P, composite, not a big deal. Consumer confidence, we'll look at it, but don't expect a whole lot there. Um, industrial production preliminary report, we will, uh, we'll, we'll check that one out on Monday. We'll see if there's anything in that that we want to look at. Let's see, on Wednesday, uh, we've got a preliminary CPI coming out of Germany. A lot of CPIs and GDP coming out of Europe, so we have some nice uh, nighttime movement. We're going to have our ADP NFP kicking into gear uh, next Wednesday. So, uh, you know, it really hasn't been a big mover for us, but it's been a good iron condor trade. Uh, we're going to have advanced GDP, which is which is important, obviously. Um, and it can have some pretty significant market moves. So we've got advanced GDP coming up, and we'll go into that one. Uh, that'll be a fun trade. We're going to have crude oil inventories like usual. FOMC statements coming on out along with the Fed funds rate. So we got NFP week, Fed funds week, same time. Uh, that'll make it a very interesting day. And it will probably actually stunt the GDP uh, trade. Uh, so just be aware of that. Like, we'll maybe get like a pop, and then, it'll, then the market will just go quiet probably by somewhere around 9.30 to 10. And uh, it'll be flat until 2 o'clock. So we're going to move off GDP, and then nothing's going to happen. Um, Everybody's waiting on the new statement to come on out. We're going to go into Aussie. Aussie can have some building approvals, so it's going to give us some nighttime news trades for you nighttime traders out there. Hopping on into Thursday, and uh, let's see. we got we got CPI flash. That's not going to be a big deal, but we might pull a trade off there. Uh, we got the CAD GDP and the U.S. unemployment claims coming out at the same time. It gives a nice dollar CAD trade. And roll on over. We'll have manufacturing PMI in China that will help out the Aussie and yen on Thursday evening. Uh, well, PPI coming out of the Aussie as well, and several year reports and a couple other China reports. So we, Thursday night ought to be a good uh, FX movement night um, for you nighttime trying and grab some of that premium uh, versus trying to grab the movement because it'll probably and on a pit for pit move. Let's see, the report comes out at 10, so market changed its temperament. Um, let's see, it's coming out at 10 o'clock. Okay, and we got a couple trades that can be done, but it looks like the main trade is getting in for an 11 a.m. expiration. Um, and so, okay, so 11 a.m. expiration, we're going to get it at 9, no later than 9.45. You're probably going to need the 9 a.m. entry due to the fact 
<coughs> Pardon me, I'm going right uh, Due to the fact that uh, we need that premium there, I want to see if we can get any tighter than 30, but even based on the last report, that would have been a good move to stay right at that 30. Um, if I measure from release to expiration at 11, like right at 11, yeah, I mean, it was at, it was at 20 pips. So that actually wasn't bad. So the exact like right at 11 was 20 pip move. Um, before that, we had 18, 10, 20, um, like 5, uh, 20. So a lot of 20s. So I definitely, I mean, they're all staying within that range. So I definitely stay at the 30. You may get less. You may get more. But um, if you can't get 30, then you just don't do the trade, and that's okay. So, but be aware, news trader or not, that we do expect a move of about 20 to 30 pips on the euro dollar between 9 and 11 o'clock tomorrow. Or not, not tomorrow, but Monday morning. So if you're aware that, that can help you as a euro dollar trader. And we don't expect it to go further than that. That should also help you significantly as a euro dollar trader. Knowing that, you know, hey, it's probably done. It's probably cooked, at least by, you know, for that time of the day. Um, I mean, I'm looking literally even at the end of day on this trade, and it looks like it's going to be pretty quiet. Um, let's see, what day of the week are these normally coming out? June 30th is a Monday. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go to May, May, now May 29th. Okay, that was a Thursday. And if we go back to April... Let's see what we got. April 28th, that's a Monday. We got March 27th, that's a Thursday. We got February 28th, that's a Friday. Okay. Well, anyways, when this report comes out, I mean, even at the end of the day, we're not seeing more than about 30 pips. So 30, 35, 20, 10, 5, 30, 20, I mean, hold it all the way. Uh, what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that if I could get 30 pips on a 3 o'clock, then I would do it. Okay, so we could also look at getting in as early as 7 a.m. for a 3 p.m. expiration. So we're going to add a trade to our bidding home sales. We have our 9 to 11 for 30. We're also going to do a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Monday on the euro dollar on the bidding home sales. It gets released at 10 a.m. We're going to do a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. iron condor for $30 or more. Now, if I get more, that's more of the merrier. Okay, but we're seeing that it stays within 30 ticks. So... Uh, that should easily be, you know, a good trade. Uh, that's based on the last 12 releases. So, and that's, I've booked all the way back. And uh, let's see how far. Yeah, I got back to about uh, basically July of last year. So, um, and it's looking at all the releases over the last 12 months. It looks completely solid. And uh, be a good way to do it. All right. So, that gives us um, our pending home sales news trade for Monday. Let me see, is there anything else? Let me check out the yet. I doubt this thing's on here. Yeah, new home sales, no. Not uh, retail sales, nope. Uh, let me check out the Aussie real quick. Man, I got home loans and stuff, but not new home sales. Okay, so um, one, make sure you got that pending home sales, $30, nine in entry to 11 a.m. expiration. And 7 a.m., so do two of them. So put two different trades on there. 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. expiration. Okay? Iron Condor, buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread. Be aware of events for Monday. Okay? Um, be aware of events would be the yen um, is going to have reports coming out at 7.30 and 7.50. Okay? They're not news trade events, but they are news events, and therefore they could have a unknown impact on the market. So just, just be aware of them. And that should give us a little volatility. It could be good, but it could also just be something you want to really be very aware of. Uh, let's check out the uh, release, uh, recent releases on the HIA new home cells. Right here. And let's just see when that's coming out. So we got the last six releases. We got 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 838, 8, 8. Eight. So, so I'd say somewhere between a few minutes before 8 to 9 o'clock is when the HIA new home sales comes out. So I would put that on your be aware if you're an Aussie trader. Um, it's not a forecast number, so we can't new trade it. We never know what the reaction is going to be. So 
you want to go in and you want to say, hey, be aware at somewhere between, I'd say, 745 and 915. Just give yourself a little buffer there. Somewhere between 745 and 915 p.m., new home, and, you know, new home sales report coming out of Aussie dollar could cause some um, you know, volatility. So just be aware, be prepared. All right, well, that uh, gets us caught up on our news trade for Monday that we needed to get done. And we come back, we'll talk about this morning's trade, and we'll talk about sort of understanding where those stops are so you can start uh, going to them instead of getting nailed by them. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in, and let's check out uh, the trades from this morning, okay? And I'm going to walk through that with you. And... Uh, Pull it all up. All right. So this morning, we had a lot of things going on that were in our favor um, in a lot of ways on doing the trades. So I had, we had short trades going on in the morning, caught, you know, easy 60-cent move there. You know, props to Merrill Lynch. Yeah, caught a 60-tick move on that. And it's flying on down, hit a one deviation level, and uh, that's where she got out. So that is awesome. Uh, so she's able to go in, and she's like, you know what, I need to protect it. Yeah, it might make more. Yes, volume's increasing. But from experience, she knows that more often than not, it's not going to go much further. If it does, we always, you know, there's always another trade. There's always another day. Okay? You know, reel it in. You got one. You got a good one. Don't let it go back. So good job on that. Some other things that she could have seen. Uh, we talked about this was a spike striker. So the spikes is just popping back the other way. Uh, would have been a big clue. So you got the deviation levels, you got the spikes, uh, which are usually telling you the market's going to go, you know, flat or reverse a little bit. And uh, so that was coming up. Um, also, I hopped on and just a simple trend line was one of the things uh, from the five minute chart that I pulled up. And we did a trade this morning. It was profitable. I did it live on the Bull Bear Binary Hour. If you missed that, you can definitely hop in there and uh, check out the archives um, on that. But as uh, the market was moving down, down, down. Okay, we got a trend line. Trend line gets broken. Deviation levels hit. We hit the deviation for the second time. The spike tracker is saying go long. Okay, so all this is happening. And the most important thing here is not only is it happening, but, like, I mean, I, I don't know. There's so many important things. But we have room for it to move up. We had a 1931, or 10131, I'm sorry, 101333. 101.33. Binary, my average fill, I got in like one at 30 and one at 17 and one at 20. And my average fill was like $22 on the trade, uh, maybe a little less than that. I put a take profit at 43. So if it got up to 101.33, I mean, I'm definitely out of the trade. And we had room to move all the way up to 101.43. So we had plenty of room. Like we had 10 more ticks beyond what I put in. I probably was a little bit overly conservative on my take profit. But anyways, did the trade live on air, went to get in, get out of the trade, you know, all that fun stuff. So. I put it in. We go long, like right back here, actually. And I put like my, my final one in right over here. So I've been, I was layering in, sort of, it was oscillating. And of course, got a little bit nervous. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I need to find something else. I was even starting to pull up and look at a short spread potentially. But I'm like, man, it's got to break down below that deviation level, or it's not going anywhere. If it does, yeah, we're gonna get 50 ticks on it. But if it doesn't, you know, we're not going anywhere. And so I had my stop trigger, and I didn't jump the trade. I didn't just run in and over trade. I, I was patient. I let it work. It didn't get filled. I'm glad because it went the it went what I said it was going to do to begin with, and that was the trade I actually had money on. So put the money in on the trade, boom, it pops up. You know, not, we had a 100% return pretty much on the trade uh, from entry to exit. Uh, so 100% return on risk, 100% return on investment. And did that in a matter of about 30 minutes or so. Uh, so, anyways, so last one is in, boom, it pops up, it takes that profit. It goes right up to the expected movement for the hour. But it does it with really, really strong volume. And so I'm, I'm sitting back wondering, I'm like, man, maybe I should have taken it a little bit later. Uh, then volume backs off, and all of a sudden, but it, not only does it back, but it backs off, but it actually starts breaking out. And it still is exceeding volume. So even though we have lower volume, even though volume is declining, we are still exceeding it. And so I'm, I'm in this torn area of what do I do? And so I go in. I'm looking at some other trades. Commercial breaks come in. Ah, and uh, 
but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking to some of the traders, and uh, Joseph, uh, one of the traders I, I trade with, and he does awesome. He's taking what I talk, teach about magnet prices, put it into place, and immediately he's like, "Hey, Daryl, we got a we got we got a magnet at one hundred one eighty one. We got another one up at like one hundred two, you know, like eleven or whatever, uh, one hundred two thirteen. And um, then another trade company was like, "Yeah, we got one at one hundred two fifty as well." So I mean, like they're going in and just pop it off where all the magnets were. And I'm like, oh, it's going to hit 102.80 like in the next like like two minutes before commercial even comes back. Boom, it nails it. And uh, then commercial comes back and it's still go or we come back on air, it's still going. It goes right back up to where? Right back up to settlement. Also exactly where the magnet price is. And so nails that magnet price and just stops. Okay? We'll talk about what you do from there after that. But stare it there. We'll keep going on this and just sort of put the whole layout together for you. Stare it there. <laughs> All righty, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So we have that trend line come down. Then we have the MVP, the Momentum Volatility Predictor, is also telling us short. So we get a stack of information coming in at us. And, uh, you know, you got to... You got to choose, do you want clean or do you want clear? So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you got so much stuff on your charts. I don't really have a lot of indicators on my charts. I have one indicator line. And I use that for like a trailing stop and a trend confirmation. Um, it's just, to me, it's about clarity. I want to see the whole picture, okay? And I don't want to have to look through. I don't have, I don't have any interpretation. I just want to see the whole picture. And so it may mean I have to look through a few things, but that's okay. Um, I look at volume, I look at ex expectations on the hour, I look at expectations on the day, and I look at the current trend, I look at uh, the deviation levels with expectations on them, and then I draw my magnets. So that's pretty much it. Um, I also, of course, have the you know alert, you know pivot, entry, confirmation, apex pattern on there. Um, anyway, so we see the market going down, you see the apex pattern flips, it goes long, so we get a long right there on the apex pattern. We get a we broke the trend line. We're breaking and we're closing with exceeding volume outside of the expectation. So we have a buy order really to go in like three ticks above the high of this bar. Boom, market takes off, goes straight to the deviation, goes straight. It basically slows down a little bit at 102.80 and then pop right on up to the next magnet price. Then it goes up a little bit further, but it takes a little time before it gets there. Uh, we're looking up at 102.50 and it popped on up, hit 102.50 right here. That was a magnet. 102.52 was a magnet price. Went up to that, stopped. And I was like, okay, well, it's either it's going to get trapped right now for a little while and probably going to go back down to like 102.01 or it's going to go up and we had, you know, want to put like 103. Falls right back down to 102.01. Hangs out there for almost the entire hour. Falls back down to the 0.7 deviation level. Breaks the trend line again. Uh, we've basically been going flat. So it's not like a major reversal. I mean, this was definitely a reversal. That wasn't really a major reversal. But turns on back around and just sort of, you know, oscillates around. And we've been stuck at the magnet price of the day, settlement, over and over again. So it started at settlement, it came down, it popped back up to settlement, came down, popped back up to settlement, came down, popped back up to settlement. Settlement is not just settlement for, it's settlement for a reason. It's a magnet price. It was the market consensus of the value of oil as of the close of the pit yesterday. Okay? So... Not only did we have a magnet there, but we had that was confirmed even heavier by having settlement there. And so what we want to do is you want to look at, you know, where would uh, part of the conversation I started off with was, and I want to talk about more today, like I talked about last Friday. Um, and if you missed last Friday's show, definitely go back and watch those archives over on Channel 7 at TFNN. But you want to go in and you want to really start understanding, start thinking how you think, and then figure out how to take advantage of your own trades. Okay. Uh, if I were long, where would I put my stop? If I were short, where would I put my stop? That's the question you really want to start learning to ask yourself. So not where would I put my stop now, but where would I put my stop if I were long, if I were short? That gets you a, a massive step ahead because so many people, maybe they think about their stop losses, but they never think about their profit targets because they're like, well, I don't know how far it's going to move. and da -da 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 -da. Well, that's why I use expected ranges. That's why I use daily moves. That's why I look at spike strikers, stuff like that. But also, one of the most powerful, most simple methods you can use is just look at where will the stops be, okay? And so I go, okay, well, what if you were looking for this move back up to settlement? You saw it break out and you bought. Maybe you bought here, 
at the last minute, wrong time, or maybe it came back down and popped back up, and so much volume's going on that you hop in. So you probably hop into the trade, you know, somewhere in this range, okay? Where are you going to put your stop loss? Becomes the next question. Okay, that's the question you got to learn to ask yourself. So, if I, and I got to do the if I, see, I got out here, right? We were talking about we go in, we get out at the magnet price. Because we expect that people are going to be, um, if I'm going long, I'm trying to go long with the sharks. So, sharks go long, they're going to be looking for where are all the breakout traders because they bought already, they need to sell. So, where are the buyers? Well, there's going to be buyers up here that have stop losses. There's going to be buyers up here that are doing breakout trades. There'll be plenty of buyers for them to sell off to, okay? And whether those people are entering or taking profit, they really don't care. They just want to get out of their trade. Well, so they go in, they get out of that trade, they start dumping it off, dumping it off, and they're like, you know, let's go and take this thing on back down again. And so that's why we still have a lot of volume pushing. There's a lot of take profit happening. There's a lot of stop losses getting hit. There's a lot of breakouts happening. And... Then we're going to go into a little bit of a accumulation to the short side phase. That's what's happening right here. Watch this oscillating right around the magnet price. Where is the simplest, easiest place to take it? To wherever the stops would be. Where would those be? Just look at the last low that wasn't filled yet. Right here. Okay, the low of this, the pivot bar. Okay, that's why it's P for pivot. The pivot bar, the lowest low since there was a lower low and then a higher low. The pivot bar, 101.91. And so by looking at that, I'm like, okay, well, that is probably where the stops will be. Now, I would expect it to come down at least to that price. I can make this a little bit large and go to 10 minutes. Sometimes it's not granular enough. Sometimes it's more accurate. Sometimes I watch both. Um, I usually have up a 4, a 5, a 10, and a diagnostic chart on anything I'm watching. Sometimes I have two diagnostic charts. But see, like, it's not granular enough on the 10 minutes. So I prefer, it's cleaner in some ways for like trend trading, but... Um, I prefer the five minutes. I think it's a little bit faster. Ten minutes is my, that's my volume chart. That's my, that's where I find my big magnet prices, okay? But for price action, a lot of times I'm going to be on a four or five minute chart or I'm going to be on a tick-based diagnostic chart. I'm not doing a lot of price action myself besides magnet price, um, you know, determination by using ten minute bars. All right, so we go over here. This is where your stop is. You have a stop loss sitting. So if I got in... Doesn't matter where I got in. I either got in there, maybe, maybe we got you got in where we got where we were talking about going along. So I mean, right here, I don't know if that's the right one. Let's grab a different circle. You know, maybe you got in somewhere around here. So you know, we got in this trade. We took a scalp. We had another breakout right there. It's another entry. So maybe anywhere along here, you got you got in the trade. Okay. No matter where you got in, you probably have your stop pretty close because you're doing a breakout and you're okay if it goes back under. I went out. You are up a lot. You want to take profit. Whatever it is, you have your stop there. So that's where the market's going to go. And so what I do is I go and I look at that. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the low of where that stop would be? The low is 101.91, so at least 101.90. We go down. We hit 101.71. I mean, actually, a little bit lower. You could trail it, or you could just target it and get out. I'm, what I'm trying to do is, like, whenever this happens... And now I'm up here at 101, you know, 25. I'm like, hey, can I get a, what I like to do is, like, can I get a binary like 20 or 30 ticks away? Because I can make 20 bucks on that trade easily. And so I go in, I sell that binary, I buy it right back, I get 57, boom, I'm out, trade's done. Okay, so now it's going down, going down, going down. And I'm sort of looking to see, you know, is it going to pop back up? What's it going to do? Where are they going? I get a spike striker. That tells me we're going long. Well, if we're going to go long, where are the stops going to be? <laughs> and so you go, well, there could be some here. There could be some, like, right here. That's pushing outside the range. So I need to take profit somewhere between these two because there definitely will be stops here. Okay, like right in between this section. So between that low and that low, really right here. Actually, let me redo that. I'm going to move this. Between the high of that down bar, that would be the proper words to use. This right here is where I expect the market to go back to. Okay? And just look at what happens with this whole area. So the market moves on down. I look up, you know, what kind of strike can I get if I can get one in this range with a decent risk reward, like 20 bucks? 
that I can make 20 bucks. I mean, I can do one, I can do five, I can do 10, I can do 100, okay? So I can make two grand on the trade, whatever. And so I go in there and said that take profit. Is that within my expected range movement? Yeah, you can get these big moves. And yeah, that was a perfect breakout trade based on expected volume, breaking the high. So you had an awesome, you know, what I call a P3 trade right there. Out of this world. Perfect P3 trade, boomerang P3 trade. Um, but also it could be an expected uh, momentum scout breakout trade. So there's a lot of different labels I can give this trade. But uh, all come down to the same thing. But I come over here. I don't want to. That, that's, a, that's a trade in itself. Notice what I got in. I got out. Okay, this was my simple work in the stops trade. And then I get, got another trade set up here. Got out up here. This is my magnets. And if I go back, it's also work in the stops. So I love to target not just magnet prices, not just deviations, not just expected move ranges, but also stops. And if I can tie all those together, I have a really high probability of my, my trade working. Why? Because it's where the orders are. And I'm getting in, I'm getting out where the orders are located. Okay? And so now I can, if it breaks out above that, I can always look at that as a potential additional trade, etc. But you know, it's where the orders are. And so and the orders are going to be stacked in those deviation areas, those expected move areas, you know, what you would call support resistance areas, uh, what, uh, and then, of course, the stops being the biggest one. So because that's, that's not just like where it has been. It's like that's where it's going to go back to. It hasn't hit the stops yet. So we're going to come back and boom, it hits the first stop. Here's the next stop. It just, I mean, just surpasses it. Okay, and look at the volume right there. Look at how the volume goes up, 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 up. Boom! They hit the final amount of stops. We got a high of one o two o four. We got a high of over here one o two o four. I mean, they just literally just hit it. Okay, and then the volume dies off. All right, we get up to one o two o five. Okay, so there's our final tick. So it comes up the stops. It looks like remember I said between these ranges. So I didn't say above this one. I said between these. So we started hitting that stops right here, then accelerated up. It stopped, came back down, went back in one more tick just to grab that poor guy that had his, his stop one tick above the sticking market. Pop, hits it, turns back around, comes back down, you know. And you can just you can just do this all day, back and forth and back and forth. And um, it's just targeting their stops again and again and again. And... Uh, it's pretty cool, just as you get used to it. And, I mean, like I said, we had here. We had another one where we went to the next level that was right here. Um, and then you go over, okay, so we're looking at it. It goes short. All right, so we hit that right there. We wait for a little bit of a turnaround. We get that over here. So I, you could have had that right anywhere. Basically, we need these couple bars. And like I said, you just keep replaying and replaying. And you look at it, you're like, okay, so once we finally get the turnaround, we're going to stop somewhere, you know, between this range. And it's just, where would your stops be? That's that's all you got to think. Where would my stops be? Well, either here or here. Okay. You know what? That means all the orders, because everybody else is the same, their orders are in this section. Okay? Um all right, so hopefully, I mean, I just hope you're starting to put that together because it makes all the difference in the world uh, when you're doing these trades to have an idea of where orders are stacked. And that's what a big trader has to do. You know, they have to think, I have a million shares. Where am I going to get out of the trade? I can only get out of a million shares if there's a million people on the other side of the trade, or a million, you know, other shares on the other side of the trade. If I'm selling them, I got need somebody who's willing to, you know, sell them, you know, let me buy back from them and sell to them. So where are those orders going to be? That's where they're going to push the market. So they'll not only accumulate, they'll get their position on, but then they're going to pop it and start moving the market to get down to that area. They know that they themselves are not going to be able to buy them all back, but they know, hey, if I can get it to this area, then there will be people there to help me out, and they'll continue selling, because they'll have stops there, you know, whatever. And it's, it's just learning how, that's how the market works. The market exists for one sole purpose, and it's not to make patterns, and it's not to make indicators tell you the right information, and it's not to make your P&L go up or go down. It exists to do one thing, to fill orders, 
That's it. That's why a marketplace exists, to fill an order between a buyer and a seller. It's an intermediate place where the two can come together and easily get a transaction accomplished. If it does that, it is a market. That is why it exists. That is the only reason it exists. And if that is the only reason the market exists, is to fill orders between buyers and sellers, then it only makes sense that the market is going to go to where the orders are. You don't put up a Walmart in a town that only has 10 people. Maybe if they have 500, but not 10, okay? So they put their stores where they know that there's enough buyers to meet seller requirements. So buyers and sellers, you put the market where the orders are. You're going to move that market. Now, that's a physical location. I, one of the analogies I've used in the past, it's like an ice cream stand or ice cream truck, okay? You don't drive to the diabetic community where nobody can have ice cream. Okay, and there's no children. So you go and you find out where the families are, where the games are, where the baseball fields are. You know, you're probably not driving your ice cream truck around whenever it's snowing outside. You're driving around where people are hot and sweating and playing outside. You know, where basketball courts at, where parks at. You're going to drive around to where the orders are to fill the orders between the buyers, the kids who want the ice cream, and the sellers. You know, Nestle or whoever's selling it, and you're just making a market in between. Learn how to go with those market movers, and you'll have a lot more understanding of where the market's going to go next. Stay right here. We'll be back right after this commercial break. All right, folks. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Let's uh, check out where the markets are at, okay? Um, and do our quick market wrap. You know, I want to I want to pull up the indices because they have just been. Let's pull that on up. Going down here. Let's get us uh, some Russell going on. And let me open that on up. It's gonna take a minute. Let's look at the simple five-minute chart. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> there we go. All right, moved on down. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Right there, down to a one deviation level perfectly. And it uh, it did it early in the morning session as well. So see that move right there? So definitely uh, some stuff to look at, but goes down, comes back down to it again. Really, really nice, clean one deviation move. I mean, we're talking within like a tick or two of that. Um, moved right up to this with the blue line. The blue line is actually the deviation move. So it moves right on up there. The green and red are the, the open and close. So it's the close of the bar. But um, anyway, so moved on up to this point and ran on across over here. Um, but that gave us a one deviation move right there. I want to grab that because I want to Put a note in. There we go. Okay. And let's move on down here. Let's check out the Dow. See how it's doing. Come on. Uh, Everything's moving a little bit slower today. But uh, we'll check that out, and then we'll do a quick market wrap, and that'll be the day. I hope you all have a great weekend. So let's see here. All right, so we got the Dow moving on down right there to one deviation move perfectly. If you want to get access to these deviations, you can. Just hop on over to FNN.com. Okay, check out the uh, spread scanner. It comes with the deviation levels for Forex and for future markets. You can get access to it right here. It's a box spread analyzer. But if we go in and we look at them, they're posted every night at 8.30 for the uh, following day. So, of course, on Sunday, they'll be posted for Monday. And um, But you go in and we pull the deviation levels up. You can scroll down and you can see there's settlement point five seven. Like all these levels, I'm telling you, these are posted the night before at 8.30 Eastern time. So you can know where the market is expecting the market to move. These are not pivot levels. Uh, they work just like pivot levels, Okay. They're not simply support resistance lines, even though they work exactly like support resistance lines. What they are is they're using a statistical deviation formula. Sounds all like wow, okay? 
but we're using implied volatility, expected movement in that market, that option market. So for the S&P, for the Dow, I look at the options. I pull the implied volatility out of the options market, which is the expected movement that's built into it. And I tie that into a, a deviation formula, not a standard deviation, which is past movement. This is future expectation of movement. People put their money where their mouth is. And that's why they are so insanely accurate day after day after day after day. I mean, you saw we put up the Dow, one deviation move. We put up the S&P, one deviation move. We put up the oil today, one deviation move. And this is not a rare occurrence. You know, I mean, if you've been on the show at all, you've seen me just hammer it again and again and again. And it's probably one of the biggest missing pieces from a trader's arsenal is the t statistical expectation, objective expectation of market movement on any given day. If you're an intraday trader, you should not be trading without this because you're going to add in at the wrong times, buy at the tops, and sell at the bottoms. And you do not want to be doing that. So I hope you will uh, check it out. Check it out for free over at TFNN. Y'all have a great day.